so let me first tell you what is uh, Cohn's triangle, okay, and how to use Cohn's triangle to represent sort of all feasible allocations. Okay, now there is a limitation of Cohn's triangle. Okay, so in Cohn's triangle, um, you can only uh, you know represent situations where we have a constant returns to scale. Okay. Uh, so, so let me just give you an example. Okay, I, I think that's going to make it clear. Okay, uh, so what you can do is uh, you can just consider endowments. Okay, omega one plus omega two equal to let's say ten. Okay, uh, so that's the total endowment of private good in the economy. Okay, and let's assume that the production function is uh, g equals f x equals x. Okay. Fine, so it's, it's just a, a simple uh, uh, CRS production function. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is this that uh, I just rewrite the set of all feasible allocations for this particular uh, situation and I'll tell you how to represent this in the in the cones triangle. So, uh, so this is how you can write set of all feasible allocations. It is uh, X1 X2 G in R three plus such that x1 so i uh, notice that this is 10 okay so if i if this is exactly omega 1 plus omega 2 minus x1 minus x2 because f of x is x so i can just rewrite this as uh, you know x1 plus x2 plus g is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 right i can i can write it like that right so uh, so basically the set of all feasible allocations will become x1 plus x2 plus g equal to 10 in our case right okay uh, so now what i can do is i can draw a equilateral triangle okay so this is an equilateral triangle okay and i can draw it in such a way that the sum of these perpendiculars must be equal to 10 okay uh, so let me tell you how is this basically going to represent sort of all feasible allocations okay so what you can do is you can maybe you know you, you can just think of this as origin of individual one this as origin of individual two okay now the thing is earlier you know the the axis used to be like this okay and now what you have done is you just shifted it like this okay so instead of axis being like uh, you know uh, uh, 90 degrees to each other they are like 60 degrees to each other okay now what does this point represent this point represents a feasible allocation so how does that represent a feasible allocation so basically g is this height okay this is the amount of public good consumed by both the individuals okay this length is the amount of private good consumed by individual one and this length is the amount of private good consumed by individual two okay so we can always choose our equilateral triangle in such a way that x1 plus x2 plus g is equal to 10. Uh, now this is uh, very easy to prove you know uh, so uh, why is it the case that uh, you know no matter what point you pick x1 in inside the equilateral triangle no matter what point you pick uh, you know this length plus this length plus this length will always be a constant okay so how can you prove it you know that's that's actually easy you know if you see uh you know you can just divide this into three triangles okay so you can just write the area of this entire triangle as the sum of the areas of these three triangles okay as the sum of the areas of these three three triangles right okay and uh, so basically you want to get what half x1 plus x2 plus g into this whatever base it is into base okay is equal to area the total area right half into x1 into base is the area of this triangle half into x2 into base is the area of this triangle half into g into base is the area of this triangle right and this is the area of the entire triangle do you agree Yes. Yes or no. 
okay now obviously given given an equilateral triangle you are given the base and you are given the area so that means x1 plus x2 plus g is equal to two times area divided by base right so basically what you have to do is you just have to set this equal to 10 that's it then no matter what point you're going to pick you know that will represent a set of that will represent a feasible allocation okay like for example you know if you if you look at this this point you know what what does this represent this represents that you know none of the individual is consuming uh you know private good okay both are consuming only public good okay if you look at this point you know what does this point represent this point represents that you know uh, there is zero consumption of private uh, there is zero consumption of public good in this economy okay because uh you know this height is zero okay and uh and uh you know individual one consumes the entire private good okay and uh individual two consumes zero units of uh private good is that is that clear to everyone okay uh, so you are asking uh which point represents that only one individual consumes private good and second individual consumes zero so basically x2 is zero you know what is x2 is zero so the x2 is zero means this height is zero when is this height zero okay when when you are on this line so everywhere on this line x2 is zero is that okay everywhere on this line g is zero everywhere on this line x1 is zero is that fine okay so basically you know you can use this triangle to represent set of all feasible allocations okay uh, by choosing the point appropriately uh, so if you want to read more about it you know i'll just uh, uh, i'll just uh, post something on uh, you know piazzas okay so the paper uh, discussed this triangle in great detail okay so uh, so you can actually read about it okay i'll be using the other one which is a doll bears triangle okay uh, to represent the set of all feasible allocations and i'll tell you how to uh, figure out uh, efficient allocations in that triangle okay